Communicating Good is sponsored by, well, still no one. But a lot of people have said the nicest things, especially Trish. Thank you, Trish. We appreciate your feedback and hope you enjoy the show. Not just Trish, everyone. Welcome to Communicating Good, a podcast produced by Samalot Media, a communication strategy and content production consultancy. I'm the Sam of Samalot and your host. This week, I'm excited to welcome Taya Rosman, the executive director and co-founder of Green Card Voices, an organization that combats stereotypes by empowering immigrants to tell their stories. Taya and her team have recorded and shared stories of over 500 immigrants and refugees coming from 150 countries and living in Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, New York, California, and Georgia. She's the editor of eight books, all award-winning collections of first-person immigrant stories, and a 2015 Bush Fellow. She holds a PhD in cultural history, specializing in oral history recording, and has committed her life to healing trauma, empowerment, and amplifying the voices of immigrants and refugees. Taya is passionate about social justice, creating brave spaces, social entrepreneurship, and immigrant leadership. I'm so honored to chat with Taya. So without further ado, here's our conversation. Taya, thank you for joining me today. Uh, so wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about Green Card Voices, so I'm just going to jump right into the questions. Uh, tell me first about the journey that brought you to this moment in time. Specifically, what were the experiences that led you to create Green Card Voices? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was born and raised in Yugoslavia, and when I was 15, uh, war started, uh, first in Slovenia, Croatia, and then it sort of followed um, in, in my birth country, there's seven countries now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was very early on exposed to, um, you know, um, the whole concept of refugees and people having to leave home and um, what it looks like. So I worked um, with in the refugee camp, the largest refugee camp in Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia for about four years and was offered a scholarship to come to the States to study. Um, in large part because of um, my, my work there and my leadership work um, with, with the refugees there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, then, you know, then I myself started uh, my immigration journey um, at the age of 20, you know, in Midwest, um, small town in Wisconsin, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. That's where I went to undergrad. And, um, but, you know, always very closely became stayed connected to um, former Yugoslavia and um, eventually, you know, got a PhD in oral history and um, really understood the profound um, effects storytelling has mm -hmm. on building empathy, understanding, connections, um, breaking down stereotypes and biases. Um, and um, yeah, it was in nonprofit world the whole time. Uh, of my career and then a group of us came together and we're like you know it wouldn't be amazing to have a platform where um, immigrants and refugees can share stories in their own voice mm. um, that's really centered around um, immigrants themselves mm -hmm. uh, and that's how we began the work in 2013. Nice uh, so how does this actually work how do you what is the process of producing the stories? Mm -hmm. So yeah, to date we have about uh, 500 stories that we recorded in nine states. Um, we follow, um, you know, the, the the it's called live narrative um, recording. It's a concept in oral history. Hmm. Um, so we really want to make sure we're only not we're not only focusing on so-called immigrant story or immigrant journey which, you know, we say it's part of every immigrant, but it's not the one and only thing about immigrants, mm -hmm. which, you know, oftentimes gets um, confused, right? So we really share um, life stories, which means um, uh, the folks we work with get six open-ended questions a month in advance. For us, prep is really key. Mm -hmm. um, and once we do the actual recording, we don't ask any other questions but those six questions because um, immigrants and refugees themselves has oftentimes gone through interviews that didn't turn out very well um, for a variety of reasons. Maybe it was media, maybe it was even through um, 
immigration process or maybe even something in their countries um, that they had to go through. So we are very uh, tra trauma informed, very sensitive. Um, and uh, yeah, the questions are about their whole life. And it's from, you know, how their life was growing up. Um, there's definitely aspects of, you know, the, the reasons for moving and how it was when people first got here. Um, but it's also about how their life is now and what their aspirations are for the future. And when we record particular stories like of STEM professionals or entrepreneurs or artists or, you know, folks in food industry, we also add questions pertaining to those topics. Uh, there's always three additional questions in those cases, and they have to do with what inspired them to go into the field, um, what are the challenges, but also opportunities um, in America, because there's definitely both. And then what are the lessons learned from the journey that they would like to pass on? So it's really about open-ended questions. It's about um, listening more than asking. And it's really being very intentional um, when doing um, storytelling work. We believe stories are a great gift to the community. They require a lot of bravery. Um, they uh, require a lot of healing and introspection. Um, and um, they really are a gift to the, com to the community. Mm -hmm. And this is in a, you share them um, in a multimedia fashion, correct? Correct. So all of them that we record, we have a website uh, as well as a YouTube channel. So they're all edited down to five minutes with the storyteller's uh, input. They uh, send us their personal photos. So all the, they're shared in a video form. But in some cases, uh, we also publish books. So to date, we've published 10 anthologies. Um, in, in case of youth, it's a, it's a collection of 30 stories. In, in terms of professionals, it's a collection of 20. And um, we've done uh, these books in five different states. Uh, so we really believe that not only stories, that stories are important, it's also important um, where they are um, shared. So for example, um, our most recent book that we did out of state was done in Rochester and Buffalo, upstate New York. And it's mostly distributed and used there because the idea is that, you know, people learn about their new neighbors um, with whom they share uh, similar experiences with. In fact, when you read through the story, you know, people talk about going to downtown Rochester or going to see Naira Falls or, you know, going to a certain high school and so forth. So the idea is that um, we understand that empathy is built by um, sharing stories that people can connect to and um, space, um, shared space definitely has that positive effect mm. on, on the empathy. So I know you mentioned at this point, you've gathered many of these stories. Were there any that, and obviously they're all impactful. Were there any that, you know, or one that impacted you the most? Yeah, you know, frankly, it's it's one of the questions I get a lot mm -hmm. um, during the uh, interviews I do. And it, it's true, it's extremely hard to pick, um, you know, especially because to date we've um, collected stories um, that come well, of, of people that come from 145 countries around the world. And we really focus on diverse immigrant statuses, which means that, you know, we have political asylees, refugees, uh, people that came here through various forms of family reunification, whether being, you know, parents reunited with their children, siblings reunited, um, or, you know, um, other things like fiance visa, um, or work-related um, visa like um, O1 Extraordinary Talent and Achievement Visa. We've done a lot of stories like that, Green Card Lottery. Mm -hmm. I mean, you name it. So mm -hmm. they're all very different and unique. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think one of my really, really um, 
a story that is really close to heart. Um, it's a story that was featured in our Wisconsin book and then also in our recent graphic novel. And it's a story of V, um, this young um, man from Vietnam. And um, yeah, when we first started working, um, you know, my jaw really dropped when the whole story unrolled because it was almost like uh, out of a movie. Um, but yeah, he shared the story how um, when he was um, in elementary school, um, some um, Americans came to his um, village through a process of um, DNA and, and so forth. He found out that his grandfather uh, was looking for, for his mom, um, his daughter, um, that um, he fathered when he was a Viet in Vietnam soldier 40 years ago. So the whole family was reunited uh, for the first time ever. And then um, his mom and um, him and the brother were all sponsored and came to Madison, Wisconsin and were able to see their, he, he was able to see his grandfather and the mother was able to see her father for the first time in their life. So it was really amazing because, you know, it's something that is possible only recently because of the uh, scientific um, abilities that we have now. Um, so those stories are pretty neat. Yeah. Beautiful. What audiences have responded the most to your work? You know, um, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, those audiences that need our work, you know, um, obviously, um, it's extremely popular in education field. Uh, we'd like to say that our stories, um, are a window, a mirror, and a sliding door for our audiences. Um, you know, a window for um, educators or community leaders or community groups that really want to better connect and understand more deeply the diverse stories of immigrants and refugees um, to counter some of the negative effects of media or, you know, um, negative rhetoric. And just to have that first person um, stories, right? Um, then the second is the mirror. Um, there simply aren't that many diverse books out there. And um, our schools are very diverse. There's more than 50 million immigrants and refugees in this country. So having these books um, and having immigrant and refugees read them is very very validating, they feel seen. Um, they um, also learn about other people with similar experiences and that they don't feel um, like they're alone going through this. And then finally, a sliding door. Um, and I, it's something I started using recently and it's you know simply um, acknowledging that some people are um, on, a, on a journey, right? Mm -hmm. So there are those that, um, you know, maybe have immigrants and refugees part of their lives and are married to them or um, work with them. And their circle of people they surround themselves is very diverse. And, um, you know, their sliding door is wide open and they're, they're in touch with so many stories and their empathy level is very high. Mm. But then there's also those that perhaps live in a very homogeneous communities, um, you know, in some rural parts, perhaps um, in certain professions and, and, and so forth, right? That just don't have that connection to a lot of uh, immigrants and refugees or just a certain group or just certain type of interaction. So those um, individuals or those communities need interaction too but it's you know for some it's like you know they're gonna read a book and you know that might open that sliding door a little bit but they'll need other uh, interactions or exposures or connections to to open that further mm. so we we understand that you know we can't um solve it all just okay. by doing the stories yes well What's been the most challenging aspect about Green Card Voices? Um, well, <laughs> more, you know, we were doing fantastic. Um, 
we were definitely on a growth trajectory, especially in 2015 when we started publishing books, mm -hmm. because that uh, meant that we were no longer just uh, reliant on donations and grants, but we had um, a steady, you know, income of from selling uh, books, and that was great. Of course, then COVID happened, and schools closed down, and bookstores closed down, and libraries weren't operating. So yeah. that was challenging. Um, but um, you know, we pivoted, created a lot of you know eBooks and other resources, and virtual um, story stitch and other things. So I think things are now um, great again. And I do have to say. While we still cannot really travel and, and expand in other states, um, we have recently moved to a brand new genre and that's graphic novel format. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited about that. So one thing is true about Green Card Voices, we always try to innovate and try new ways how to share stories. So whether it be you know, digital video or written word, like in the initial books that we published, exhibits, we also had podcasts. Um, most recently, it's the graphic novel format, um, and it's because it's a genre that is most um, that has the highest um, uh, circulation rate in the libraries, and um, it's right now the most popular for the middle eight, middle school and high school, um, simply because. Um, Pe uh, people these days grow up on a lot of images yes. and the attention span is very short. So um, we are in for, you know, for the good or bad uh, in this uh, era of um, reluctant readers, uh, or I should say readers that have both, you know, text and image um, attached to it. So it's been really fantastic to work with storytellers. And then we pair them always with the immigrant and refugee immigrant or refugee illustrators. Yeah. So we're able to now uh, really uplift um, a lot of stories through imagery as well, yeah. which has been very exciting. And the first graphic novel we published had the highest um, sales despite you know being published during COVID. So I think we're definitely planning to do more of the graphic novels. And we're also adding a brand new age um, target audience. So in the past, we've been working a lot for young adults and for adults. Now we're adding um, a new age group, which is children's nine through 12. Um, because over the years, um, a lot of educators or parents would ask, you know, we need to start working uh, on these topics when kids are even littler. And um, they would always say like, what do you have for younger, you know, children, and we didn't have much. So the book that's coming out in March uh, is, is going to be our 11th book and the first book for audience of 9 through 12. Wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. So turning the corner a little bit, what do you think is the most common myth that, <clears throat> excuse me, that people have about immigrants that needs to be dispelled? Yeah, you know, immigrants are really just like any other people, you know. <laughs> Um, and, you know, the narrative, um, unfortunately, that's out there a lot, um, it's this rags to riches, right? Um, the American dream, right? Like, uh, immigrants come from horrible countries, um, leaving because they're unhappy and America is all about opportunity and they, um, you know, they they um, have great things happen once they come here. And, uh, you know, that could not be f further from the truth. It is uh, maybe true for a handful of people. And even those, you know, it's like, how do we define success, right? Like, mm -hmm. yes, you can have a very successful uh, company that you're able to build, but, you know, maybe your marriage crumbles or you become sick or, you know, it's like, uh, it come, It has to come with how do you define success, right? Uh, first, I, th I think. And then secondly, you know, all the immigrants and refugees had good and bad things happen in their country. Um, you know, a lot of the people are very confused when 
um, they say, oh, what is up with the story? Like people talk about growing up in refugee camp and they say that their, their life, their childhood was, was um, carefree and wonderful. Because, you know, when you live in that moment, you know, you don't know anything else and you have people that love you and, you know, it's, it's what you know. So you have nothing to compare it to. And, you know, secondly, I really want to say there are opportunities, but there are also challenges in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it also really depends for who, right? If you speak the language, if you have education in the States, um, also depending um, on what race you are, all that and much more affects on what kind of opportunities and what kind of challenges you're going to have in this country Mm -hmm. and how you're going to navigate Um, You know, in our recent graphic novel, one of the stories is of Amara, um, who's from Liberia, and he, through the story, very clearly talks about living first in Manhattan's west side, then Harlem, then New Orleans, and then Minnesota. Four completely different places Mm -hmm. and four completely different situations for a Black man. And what that means... um, you know, and if you are white, you, you get privilege. If you, so, you know, if you're um, not, then you have a complete new set of challenges mm-hmm. that you don't have if you were not to migrate to United States. Yes. And it's, it's a lot mm-hmm. to deal with. So looking ahead, Green Card Voices is obviously an incredibly vitally important organization. Always, always has been. But given the challenges we face right now, doesn't it seem that, and and how they all sort of seem to stem from a lack of empathy, doesn't it seem that there's an even more pressing need for work like that, like what's being done by Green Green Card Voices? Yeah, you know, I'm going to be totally honest, you know, um, I think a year ago, um, Erica Lee wrote a book, America for Americans. And, you know, for a long time, I too believed, you know, yes, it's a pressing need and it's just going to get worse and worse. And um, the book that she wrote, you know, that was inspired by the election of the previous president and her misunderstanding, like, uh, like her, her, because in the past, you know, we believed, oh, you know, um, when the society has economic challenges, right, then, you know, people are lo- looking for an escape goat. Mm. And, you know, but, you know, in her very, very thick book, which I recommend, um, she says, you know, well, America is not in that grave of an economic, um, you know, bad situation (laughs) you know it's not like you cannot blame the economy um because it's not like so like what is it what is the reason you know like you say that things are going worse and because i think if we find the reason then you know we can tackle it and um what i came to believe you know that just like people, some people are fantastic. Um, there's also some people that, um, you know, are not. And uh, just like America has a lot of opportunities, it's also a land of racism and a land of xenophobia. Uh, you know, it's not um, one or the other. It's, uh, you know, one thing and the other thing. Mm-hmm. So what really comes down to is for the society to create organizations, resources, um, festivals, I mean, just a lot of things to to always counterbalance, right? Mm. To always counterbalance anything that is negative so that you have some sort of balance constantly. So that you're not never off balance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think that's, that's what's important. So yes, it's important to, for us to continue to do the work. It's important for similar organizations, local governments, uh, foundations, you know, everyone to be promoting diversity Hmm. um, of, you know, languages, religions, Hmm. uh, ethnic backgrounds and so forth. Right. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to be like doom and gloom. I think that was the reality Hmm. for, for a long time. Um, It wasn't so out in the open, but I think that's why it made it might feel that it's worse now, Mm. but I think if you talk to, you know, um, immigrants or people of color, um, it has not been um, that much better before Mm. either. It's devastating. Yeah, you know, I think... um, it really comes down to humanity, mm-hmm. you know. It's not something that we are given mm-hmm. um, as as a certainty. It's something that needs to be worked on. You know, empathy is like a muscle. You know, it's not something that's um, just there from the work. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, just like health and you know all those things. It's like it's all about the, the little daily choices that you make that um come about to you know being healthy or like mental health or all of that it's same with with empathy in a society right if you nurture and you're very mindful about uh, promoting those things it's going to happen but if you just uh, let it happen and hope for the best you know um you might not be happy with what how things turn out Tia, yeah, it's my my final question What's the best way that people can support Green Card Voices? Yeah, um, thank you. So first of all, you know, I always like to say an apple uh, a day keeps the doctor away. I believe that's an American saying. I always say, you know, um, a story, an immigrant story a day keeps prejudice away. So um, always practice intentional diversity, um, not just learning about different immigrants, but anyone that's... Um, perhaps, you know, different from you. Uh, There's just um, something innate in us that, you know, um, we surround ourselves with people that are similar to us. Um, It's just um, the the comfort zone, right? But it's the outside of the comfort zone is the learning zone. So when we go to the next zone outside where things are different, where we actually learn and expand our knowledge and experience. So just be very intentional about, you know, uh, oh, I'm doing a takeout. Let me try something I haven't tried before. You know, um, I'm doing a trip. Let me, you know, go to a foreign speaking country um, and, and, you know, things like that. So I think there's a lot we can do (laughs) just as people. But other than that, (laughs) more concretely about our work, you know, we obviously have um, books that people can buy and read and share with their loved ones. Um, We have Story Stitch, which is a card game that's a guided storytelling discussion, which people can use to connect um, very meaningfully through sharing and exchanging stories. Um, And uh, yeah. If they're compelled to donate now at the end of the year, everybody's welcome to do that as well, of course. Wonderful. Well, Tia, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. It's good to speak with you. Take care. Yes, thank you. Bye.